So I'm getting about a kilo of strawberries a day at the moment. It, more than I know what to do with, we're, we're eating them for puddings and, and I've been giving them to family, friends, to neighbors. I've just got so many, it's time to start making some jam. So I'm just gonna do a little small batch today and just show you the very basic recipe um, that I use just to preserve some of my strawberries. So for this basic recipe, I'm gonna use a heavy bottom saucepan. It's not enough fruit to use my big fruit pan. Um, it's just one little batch. Obviously the fruit itself, I'm using a kilo of cane jam sugar. So that has got the pectin in it. If you haven't got the jam sugar, you can just use lemon juice. Um, for a batch this size, probably one or two lemons would be fine. Um, stainless steel bowl, I've already washed my jars and they are ready to go in the oven. I'll do these at about 80 degrees centigrade for 15, 20 minutes. It, it just dries them out after washing and sterilizes them. And the lids of the jars I put into a bowl and I'll just cover those with boiling water about 10, 15 minutes before I'm due to use them. And then all my knives, chopping boards, funnels have just been washed in hot soapy water. Um, and obviously weighing scales too. So that, that's all you need for this recipe. So I'm just roughly chopping up the strawberries now. Just take the top off with the stem. And then strawberries are about this size, smaller strawberries I just cut in half. Bigger ones like that, I'll cut into three slices and then perhaps once down the middle. You can leave your strawberries as, as big or as small as you want. It depends how lumpy you want your jam really. I, I prefer a slightly smoother jam. So I, I chop them up perhaps a little bit more, but I also, um, whilst it's cooking, I'll just mash them a little bit with the back of the spoon, um, just to sort of break it down a little bit. I also like my jam slightly runnier. I don't like a thick jam that's hard to spread. So when I cook it, I'm not too worried about finishing the jam a little bit earlier than perhaps some would, because I do like it sort of a spoonable consistency. So I need a kilo of strawberries. So one bowl is about 250 grams. So I'm gonna crack on and do four, three more bowls and get my kilo of strawberries done. So that's my kilo of strawberries, nicely chopped. Um, I'm getting so many strawberries, I think I'm gonna to have to try freezing them. I, only for jam making, so I'm assuming if you freeze them, they go a little bit squishy. I've never frozen strawberries before, so if anyone has any tips on that, please let me know. But I think I might just freeze them like I do my damsons in kilo batches, just ready for jam making through the winter months. There's nothing better than making fresh jam from your own fruit on a, on a cold winter's day. But anyway, it's time to get cooking. So just as I'm about to start cooking, I basically put the oven on, and I put it on to about 80. See, it's a bit hard to tell my cooking now because the, the little dot has rubbed off, but I know it's straight up. So about 80, and I put the jars in, and I leave these in whilst I'm cooking. So depending on the size of the batch, you know, it, it will be varying times, but that dries them out and disinfects them. And I'm also gonna put the water now onto the, the lids. So the lids are just facing up in the bowl. And I basically just boil the kettle. And I just cover those in boiling water and then leave them in the water until they're needed. So there you go, that's just covered those. Move those out of my way. So, you basically get the strawberries into the pan. I use a wooden spoon the whole way through this process. So get the strawberries in. You don't need to add any water to this. There's plenty of water in the strawberries and this is what we're gonna boil off through the cooking process so it will actually reduce right down I think I usually get four, four jars when I'm doing my damsons. So I, I always do five jars just in case there's a bit extra. So I put the sugar straight on. Like that. 
and then I'll just put it on a low heat and what you want to do here is just kind of give it a stir and um, you just cook it over low heat until all the all the sugar is kind of dissolved and there's no more sort of granule granules you'll feel it as you stir it if, if there's granules it sounds a bit gritty against the bottom so you just got to keep stirring it and um, it can take a little while so I'll, I'll come back when it's basically ready to turn the heat up to start the simmering process so we're just about at the stage now it's feeling like there's no more granules of sugar we're just about at the stage to turn the heat up but what I'm going to do first like I say I like a fairly smooth jam so I'm just gonna get a masher and just give it a bit of a squish over just to break them down a little bit more I just don't don't like my jams too lumpy so I just go through it give them a bit of a squish they, they do kind of break up a bit with the heat as you're boiling it but this just helps to give them a bit more of a squish so there's not not any big lumps So that will probably do. It's just an extra little, little measure. Oh, the smell is gorgeous. All right, that'll do. So basically, what I'm going to do now is just turn the heat up, and I've got my jam thermometer, just a Kilner jam thermometer. And what I do is I basically monitor it, and I stir constantly. Um, Otherwise, the jam can stick quite badly to the bottom of the pan. You, I, I always tend to get a little bit of a, of a stick here and there, and I have to kind of scour it off. But, um, but yeah, so you want, you want to take the temperature up. There's two ways, really, of telling that it's ready. So you want to get the temperature to about 104 centigrade, which I think is 220. About 220, I think. 220 is about... 105 but I go to about 104 centigrade like I said I like it slightly on the runnier side I don't mind it being a bit runny at all um, but I also put a little saucer in the freezer so that it's, it's really cold ice cold and then when you get to 104 or just over 100 I, I'd sort of get a little batch out just a teaspoon and put it on I'll, I'll show you that and you can just test to see if it wrinkles and, and sets like you you like your jam to be so um, that's, that's two ways really of testing. So it's going to take a little while to get up to a rolling boil and, um, and then that'll take a little while to reduce down. But what I do also, as it's boiling, you'll get scum coming up, bubbling up and going to the sides. So just as, you, as you're stirring, as you're going through, just gently try and scrape the scum off and I'll always keep a bowl just next to the pan. I'll just get the scum off and put it in the bowl. So it's, it's like this sort of bubbly scum that you can see forming here you'll get a fair bit of that forming and I'll, ju I'll just try and scrape it off as I go because um, I assume that's like the sort of contaminants and things are just sort of coming to the top but um, yeah so I'll just scrape that off so this will take a little while like I say so I'll come back when I'm nearly done so as it's boiling like I say this you get this bubbly sort of froth form around the edges I'll just keep scraping that off into a bowl just gently, you don't want to take too much of the mixture away, but just, just keep scraping the foam off. So we're up to about 103 now. So I'm just gonna try a little bit on my plate. And I'll just leave that to just cool off for a second. Whilst I keep stirring, because I don't want it to stick. it can take a fair amount of time. You'll hit 100 when you're boiling fairly quickly and then it can take quite a bit of time to creep up that last three or four degrees. So I just, just keep stay, taking this scum off around the edge. You'll always, there'll be a little bit there left when you come to jar it up anyway, but I'll just go off as much as I can. 
Right, let's have a look. This could be a little bit too runny. It's wrinkling. It is wrinkling, but that's probably a little bit too runny. So I'll just put that back in the freezer to stay cold. And I will get it up another... So we're about, we are about 103, coming up 104, so we're not far off. I have turned the heat down a little bit now. I was on the, it's got six settings on the hob. I was on five to get it up to boiling. It gets right up to the top when there's a lot of water there. I then turn it down to four until it just gently slows down, but it's, it's simmering still quite rapidly, but it just, the water boils off and it, and it drops down. So I just keep taking this scum off from just around the edges and keep monitoring the temperature. Right, so it's been, it's been a, a couple of minutes since the last test and I think we're there. So I'm turning the heat off and I'm just gonna check another little batch just there. Most of the scum is now off. Just the tiniest little bit around the edge. And you can kind of tell, and another sign is that it kind of goes clear. It just, it just takes on a slightly different look once you've got all the scum off and it's all kind of at, at that ready point. It doesn't feel like I've had anything stick to the bottom, which is good. So we are at about 104, probably about 218 Fahrenheit. So let's have a look. So hopefully you can see that. So it's just wrinkling as I push it. And it will sort of hold a, hold a drip. So I, I think that's about ready. I think when that's cold, that'll be just about ready. Oh, tastes beautiful. Right, so it's a bit of a sticky, messy old job, this. That's the amount of scum I got off. Just a little bowl, about half a bowl of sort of scum. It's always about like that. But that looks nice and clear now. Let's turn the extractor fan off so you can hear me a bit better. Right. So I'm going to get my jars out now. And you want to jar up whilst everything's still hot. So there's no risk of breaking the jars or anything. So I'll just use a... That's all done. So what I do is I get a bit of tissue and I just with my asbestos hands. Get the lids out. Ow, ow, ow. So they can just sort of dry. You don't want them to be wet when you put them on. Now I use my jam really quite quickly. I use at least, um, at least one jar a week, so I don't bother to further sterilize with a water bath. If I was doing big big batches, then perhaps I would, but um, I, I really don't bother because I, th this will be used in just over a month. So this, annoyingly, my funnel doesn't quite fit perfectly in those saved jars of mine. So I'll just get a scoop, a ladle, And then basically just ladle the jam, the hot jam. Into the jars. And I leave about a centimetre or so of space at the top of airspace. Really do watch your fingers with this because I have dripped it on my fingers before and it is really hot.
So like I say, I don't think I'm gonna quite get five jars. I quite often get four and a half. It does vary slightly. Um, I think if you just take it a few extra minutes, it will reduce a fair bit further. I always do five jars just to make sure. And I don't think I've ever got a full five jars. No, and I'm not gonna again. Like, like I say, that's fine. This, I'll use this half jar straight away. That'll be gone in two or three days. And um, the other jars, I use about one a week. So basically what I do, again, just make sure these are fully dry. Inside clean tissue and put the lid on nice and tight. Just be careful holding the jars because they are really hot. proper right lucky look landed outside upwards out super hot so yeah like I say you can water bath these um, I have got a, ow, a canner um, which I could do that but I don't I use them so quickly I just really don't bother that's it so they're on tight enough as they cool the top will pop down out out and that's it a nice batch of four and a half jars of homemade strawberry jam so i'm going to use the half jar up first i have already tasted some and the consistency is perfect so it's not runny it holds its shape but it's just perfectly scoopable and that's just how i like it so it's just nice and spreadable it's not too lumpy look at that it's perfect it's just how I like it that is hmm perfect batch beautiful and this is today's harvest another two kilos there so be more jam making to come in the next couple of days i think take it easy guys see you next time